I'm Juliette Sali. In this week's edition of IG Macro Intelligence, we take a look at how the resilient economy and strong consumer demand are expected to affect this US earnings season and what it shows us about the state of the global economy. We also take a look at what analysts say and their predictions of a Santa Claus rally into the year end. Well, the U.S. economy has proved more resilient than anticipated throughout 2023, helping to support consumer demand. Reuters data show S&P companies are expected to have increased earnings by 1.3% in the third quarter from a year ago. That's a fairly tepid advance, however important as it marks a pickup after three quarters of flash or declining profits. The outlook for the fourth quarter will also be key. Reuters data show fourth quarter earnings for the S&P 500 could rise almost 11% from 2022. Meanwhile, analysts at FactSet point out the blended year-over-year earnings growth rate for the S&P 500 is currently 0.4 of 1%. And if that is the actual growth rate for the quarter, it will mark the first quarter of earnings growth for the index since the third quarter of 2022. Elsewhere, Bloomberg economists predict a small decline in third quarter earnings of negative 0.3 of 1% before a sharp rebound in the fourth quarter. Data compiled by Bloomberg Intelligence projects net income at S&P 500 companies will grow about 7.6% year on year in the fourth quarter. Well, a profit bounce back could fuel a rally in the index, which saw a sharp two month sell off in large cap companies. The S&P 500 has declined since its July peak, however, is still up year to date by more than 12 percent. London Stock Exchange data show that the S&P 500 index is trading at nearly 18 times forward 12 month earnings estimates, which, according to Reuters, exceeds the index's long term average of 15.6 times. The S&P 500's forward P.E. ratio is below below the five-year average, but above the 10-year average, according to Factset. Another potential boost to investor sentiment is the expected gain in consumer earnings. Reuters predicts earnings in the consumer discretionary sector to gain around 23%. And Factset points out Amazon is the largest contributor to earnings growth for the sector and notes if the online giant was excluded, the blended earnings growth rate for the sector would fall to 14.4% from around 22%. On the other hand, the energy and material sectors are expected to see a decline in revenues due to fluctuating commodity prices. Bank of America pointing out history suggests earnings typically recover stronger than they fall, as downturns usually remove excess capacity, resulting in leaner cost structure and improved margin profiles. Well, the recovery in America's largest companies may not filter through, though, to the small cap stocks, which generally are more sensitive to rising interest rates. Any positive tailwind from U.S. equities would boost sentiment in the local market, which has underperformed the S&P 500's year-to-date advance. The S&P ASX 200 remains range-bound for 2023. However, many analysts are predicting a so-called Santa Claus rally into the year's end. Sean Hickman from Market Matters told Ausbiz he sees a further 5% rally for the Australian equity market by year's end, despite what he calls wild cards, such as, of course, the war in the Middle East and rising bond yields. Well, the trend is also your friend. Seasonality shows the ASX 200 tends to bounce in the fourth quarter of the year, with October marking a seasonal low before the so-called Santa Claus rally into December. Market Index points out there are only three Octobers where the ASX 200 fell more than 5% in October, halting the index's attempt at a year-end rally. They were the Asian financial crisis in 1997, the global financial crisis in 2008, and October 2018 when then U.S. President Trump waged a trade war with China. And that is your IG macro intelligence for today. I'll see you next week.